give you some added responsibility to carry on the tradition of your region. Do you feel any of that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just try to put out, um, write the best music I can possibly write. And, uh, and whatever comes from that, you know, I, I definitely uh, feel like I have a responsibility to, uh, um, keep this thing going and, um, keep being creative and keep coming up with different, and just, you know, being the best Eureka that I can be in the, in the genre. And, uh, I think everything will work out fine. And, you know, my band and I, we really love to play blues. We really, uh, and, you know, I, I write a lot of music. Um, and, you know, a lot of my music is just what it is. And it's just music, but I'm really honored to be a blues musician and be considered one. And uh, hopefully we keep keep banging it out. You know, man, we're we paying, we paying homage to the guys that did it before us. Uh, you, know, you know, these guys went through a lot to express themselves. And and uh, I'm thankful for the, for the guys, man, from back in the days that did it. So everybody know, knows what it's about. You know, uh, everybody knows, you know, at least the, uh, the, the reason for it, um, about how it started. About your first album, it's called Heartfelt. Right. What can you tell me about it? Oh, uh, you know, uh, well, that was my first album I ever recorded, and uh, well, that was my first album I ever recorded as a singer. Uh, I had uh, rap albums before that, um, but I just used to record my rap albums and give them away. But <laughs> <laughs> I just love music so much. Uh, but uh, Heartfelt was just uh, an album that I really started writing music. And I wanted to become uh, a recording artist, and I didn't want to be because we we already were performing, doing cover tunes and stuff at the show. But I always wanted to put some originals in to my set, and uh, so I knew I just couldn't be a cover band for the rest of my life. So if I wanted to do anything serious, so I uh, started writing and putting my being on music and that's what I came up with at that time <laughs> I kind of laugh every time I think about it because it, it, uh, I never looked at myself as recording music so when I first heard myself back heard the band back and, uh, on the TV I was like man it's crazy Sounds like after your first album you, you kind of found your, your calling and, and got the itch to continue on this path Yeah I got the itch to keep doing it man it's, uh you know, I just remember about writing and recording and, uh, just, you know, being in the mix doing it. That's why I keep laughing because it keeps making me flash back a little bit. <laughs> well, you must have had a rapper name. Well, what was your rapper name? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Reek Dog, which is my uh, nickname. Everybody called me Reek Dog growing up. Uh, I mean, people still call me Reek Dog. I mean, it's just me. Uh, I'm Reek, uh, Reek Dog, Reek. Uh, whatever you want to call me, it's all crazy. <laughs> but uh, I'm really not a, like, you know, 
trying to be a character or anything, man. I'm just Eureka, so and that's, and that's what I that's what I always want to be. So it, it, it's it's out there. Blues America, blues people, sound bite. I was raised on farm. Oh, back where I was born and raised at, I was in a little place called Hughes Spring, Texas. Oh, about 70 miles this side of Louisiana. I stayed on my dad on the farm down there and stayed on the farm all my life. Up until I was about 30 years old. And that's what, when I left and started trying to play guitar. And thank God. That was long that in the Prussian time. Couldn't get no job nowhere. And so and I'd go around and play a little house party with this boy, make a dollar and a half. Well, a lot of folks are just getting one day's work on that relief, a dollar and a half for that one day. I get three or four parties out a week. I'm making a lot of money. <laughs> dollar and a half for the party. <laughs> America. Like cornbread and chili. Mmm, doggy. Damn, that's good. That is the absolutely Sunday school truth. This is Roger Earl of the band Foghat, and I want to tell you about the Blues Foundation, a non profit organization dedicated to preserving blues music, history, celebrating blues recording and performance excellence, supporting blues education, and ensuring the future of this uniquely American art form. The foundation serves a worldwide blues community with assistance, answers, and important services. Contact information and news. Learn more about the Blues Foundation and how you can join us at blues.org. You're listening to Blues America. Blues America. More blues on our Facebook and Twitter. Alligator recording ours, Jerika's Singleton, my special guest today on Blues America. Well, there's a few young guys in your neck of the woods playing blues, including Mr. Sip. Um, well, actually, we were on a festival together uh, not too long ago, man. He's a really cool guy. Uh, and we, we run into each other at shows sometimes, and um, like at awards and stuff like that, and we always take time and talk a little bit, and uh, pretty cool guy. Yeah. Now, Jerikas, I've seen you play some crazy-looking guitars. Oh, I'm playing Clevenger Custom Guitar. Uh, it's an awesome guy by the name of Bert Clevenger um, out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Um, he makes these guitars from scratch. And uh, <laughs> he's really talented, so I'm, uh, I'm honored to be playing his guitar, man. Jerika Singleton, we're coming to the end of the program, and, and I've got time for one last question. When is your next album coming out? Are you working on something new? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we've been in the studio, and uh, you know we're always uh, working on something new. I'm always writing, um, and uh, it, it should some should come out. Uh, we should have something on for the, you know spring of this year, or something like that. I don't know. I'm not sure, but uh, before the summer hits, uh, I think we'll have uh, something for you guys that you, I believe, you would. Uh, enjoy because I'm having a lot of fun uh, in the studio with my band uh, uh, coming up with tunes and, and, and being creative it's really fun okay well thanks for coming on to the show today and, and telling your story and talking about the blues okay well thanks a lot Drew man I appreciate that <laughs> There you have it, folks. The great Jerika Singleton. Links to his website are available on bluesamerica.com. So go check it out. The Way Way Back Blues is straight ahead. When I wake up in the morning and get out of bed I'm hoping my baby will cook me breakfast She start fussing instead So I grab a banana feeling good Then I head out the door my car won't stop, windows busted, plus somebody took my radio. 
And you wonder why I'm singing the blues I see it every day Right. Blues America is endorsed by the Phoenix Blues Society. Learn how to become a member at phoenixblues.org. What we're going to do right here is go back. Way back. Back into time. It's time to go back, baby. Way, way back. This is the Way, Way Back Blues. Lord have mercy. I want to write a letter so bad I don't know what to do. I lay down last night, couldn't eat a bite. The woman I love don't treat me right. Laid in my pencil, baby, it's done going bad. And it's the worst old feeling, baby, that I ever had. I woke up this morning, my baby says she's mighty mad. Cause the lady in my pencil, it's done going bad. Laid in my pencil. Baby, it's done going bad And that's the worst old feeling That I ever had My baby told me this morning She's feeling mighty blue Laid in my pencil Just wouldn't do And she said Been ready all night Lay in your pencil, daddy, just won't write. Lay it in my pencil, baby, just won't write. And it's the worst old feeling, baby, that I ever had. Baby said she going to quit me. I tell you for this reason why. Lay it in my pencil. Going bye bye. Lay it down last night. Couldn't help but cry. Wanted to write so bad. I was about to die. Lay it in my pencil. Baby, it's done going bad. And it's the worst old feeling, baby. That's the Way Way Back Blues with Geechee Temple, better known and more successful as Johnny Temple singing Lead Pencil Blues, a song about a pencil that won't write. But of course, he's not actually talking about a pencil, if you get my drift. (laughs) More importantly, the song features one of the earliest recordings of the walking bass, which would become the most recognizable standard sound in contemporary blues music. Johnny claimed he invented this style, which he called running bass. Robert Johnson recorded in this style one year later, and unfortunately for Johnny Temple, Robert received the credit. 